the offensive side, especially with the Dallas Mavericks. The Warriors sad to lose Clay, but they are not wasting any time, according to our own Chris Haynes, NBA insider. They're aggressively pursuing that guy right there, Lori Markkinen from the Jazz. And if Danny Ainge's history trading stars with the Jazz is any indication, it's going to take kind of a massive haul to get marketed. Nine future first rounders for Gobert and Mitchell. What do you think, Spinny? I mean, Danny is the master. He's been doing this since he's with the Celtics. If Danny makes a trade, you get a chance to see a lot of writing on that board. It's going to be picks. It's going to be the players. It's going to be a lot. And Danny yeah. always is looking for the future and trying to grab somebody that he drafts and he gets his, his team to get a chance in three or four years, even a position to maybe, maybe win the Western Conference. Yeah, Chris Haynes saying they're aggressively pursuing him. Markkinen averaged 23.2 points per game, 8.2 rebounds, and two assists this past season. How do you see him fitting in with this Warriors court? I see him fit in anywhere because that's okay. what I, I, I'm a marketing fan. You look at him, he has a slow start in his career with Chicago, just trying to figure it out. But I thought... The last two years, you've saw him take another step. He's gotten stronger. I mean, he's more aggressive. He can shoot it. He can post. He can rebound. He can run. Mm -hmm. And the way the game is played right now, he fits in in pretty much anywhere or any offense uh, that you have. Not the greatest defensively, yeah. but that's the part that he has to work on. How about this sneaky trade that they did? A deal with Kyle Anderson today, the Warriors did. Sneaky pick up three-year, $27 million contract. The Warriors executing a sign and trade with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you like this pickup? Uh, I love it because, yes, he's slow-mo and he won't be running a lot of fast breaks, <laughs> but he has a high basketball IQ. You can plug him in in any different situation. That's the one thing I love about him is he's not uncomfortable in any situation on the basketball floor. Mm -hmm. What you can do with him is you can play him at the five, yeah. you can play him at the one. He can guard. He showed that he's gotten tremendously better guarding smaller guys. They put him defensively. I love this for him because if you make a mistake because of his passing ability and his basketball IQ, they're going to have him and Draymond. Yeah. That definitely helps the Golden State Warriors. I know, and I know a lot of the big questions yesterday were where do the Warriors go from here after losing a guy like Klay Thompson, which I feel like was kind of a couple years in the making if you really do think about it. But then they're aggressive today. Now they're aggressively pursuing it, pursuing Laurie Markkinen. Where do you feel like the Warriors stack up in a very heavy-hitting Western Conference? Well, you know, it still comes down to, obviously, you got to have the system and play people play off Steph Curry. It's not just your traditional yeah. um, high pick and roll. Steph is running off the baseline, baseline. There's a lot of movement. There's a lot of reacting and reading. There's a lot of body movement. So I think it is Kyle, um, obviously Anderson, slow-mo, he fits. Mm -hmm. Lori Marketing fits if they can get a chance to get him. I think the Warriors right now is shoring up their bench and also finding a way when they do have to compete against some bigs. I love Looney, but I still think they need one more big. You know, that could be an offensive threat for them in some kind of way. Still a lot of eyes watching the Golden State Warriors. Hello, Dub Nation. It was recently reported that the Utah Jazz are willing to trade Laurie Markkinen. With the Jazz now open to trading Laurie Markkinen, the bidding for him is officially open, and the bidders have just one job, impress the man behind some of the most sinister robberies of all time, Danny Ainge. One team that has been extremely persistent in trying to impress the Utah Jazz is the Golden State Warriors. The team that just lost Klay Thompson and also lost Paul George despite reportedly doing everything they could to get him. In fact, it was reported that the Clippers rejected not just one, but multiple trade proposals for Paul George. In my book, they deserve an A for effort. Klay Thompson's departure, along with the current state of the Warriors, left a hole that D'Anthony Melton, Kyle Anderson, and even Buddy Heald couldn't fill alone. And yes, a full video about Buddy Heald will be coming soon to the channel, so subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. For those concerned about the Warriors' moves interfering with their chances of getting Laurie, John Hollinger says the trades involving Heald and Anderson would have almost no impact on a potential Laurie deal. If the Warriors end up giving up, it will be on their own merit. It's a little surreal to see the Warriors in panic mode right now, trying to make the most of the end of Curry's career after being so dominant for so long. For a quick refresher, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson and Draymond Green, against all odds, reached six NBA Finals, won four titles, played 721 games and had a 518-203 record, good enough for a winning percentage of 71.8%. 
That's impressive, and what's even more impressive is that this trio, who plagued the league for so long, is no longer together. Curry and Green are still there, but Klay Thompson is gone, seeking greener pastures in Dallas. With the Klay Thompson era over and Paul George opting to sign with the Philadelphia 76ers, the Warriors have turned their attention to adding depth and going all out for Laurie Markkinen. I put it in quotes because while it was reported that the Warriors were all interested in Paul George, it was also said that they refused to include Jonathan Kuminga in any trade for him, something you would think would change for Markkinen, despite reports saying it hasn't. The Warriors really love Kuminga, and it's hard to blame them. The 2.01M wing, Kuminga, is coming off a monstrous season where he averaged 16.1 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 2.2 assists with 52.9% shooting at 21 years old. If negotiations reach a deadlock between the two parties, Kuminga could end up being the piece that pushes the deal forward. If the Warriors are able to acquire Lori without paying the exorbitant price of adding Kuminga, some difficult conversations will have to be had. But even if they do the unthinkable and pay the price demanded by Ainge, Steph, Draymond and Laurie would make an incredibly fun trio to watch, along with some of the Warriors' new additions. I'm not saying I would do it, but Laurie would solve a lot of the Warriors' problems. He brings height, at 2.13M, brings scoring, averaging 23.2 points this season, and brings a devastating long-range shot, attempting 8 three-pointers per game and converting 39.9% of them. He is a phenomenal low-volume off-ball player who would thrive in the Warriors system. When I say low-volume, I mean that Laurie doesn't need 50 touches of the ball to get into the game, he can contribute naturally within the flow of the attack. Honestly, Laurie solves many teams' problems and makes others a nightmare to play against. Kings, Spurs, Timberwolves and Pelicans are some of the other teams that have shown interest in trading for Markkanen. Laurie Markkinen and Steph Curry on the same team is something worthy of movies. I wanted the Warriors to get Laurie on the cheap more than anything else at one point. What makes me sick is that at one point Laurie was 150% obtainable by Warriors for pennies on the dollar. Three years ago, the Bulls were desperate for Lonzo Ball, and in that desperation, they were trying to trade Laurie. The Bulls ended up getting Lonzo Ball, we didn't get Laurie, an athletic big man who can shoot, would take the Warriors' offense to another level. In the comments below, tell us where you think Laurie would be most deadly. Maybe you like the idea of him joining Curry late in his career? It's time for the Warriors to consider a risky move. For years, the Warriors played conservatively, re-signing their veteran stars while using draft picks on young prospects. That was the two-timeline strategy championed by Ona Joe Lacob. While it brought them victory in the 2022 NBA Finals, it proved inadequate to sustain their dynasty. The upcoming offseason emerges as a critical moment for the Golden State Warriors, ready to reshape the franchise's trajectory. Will they commit to one last attempt at winning the championship or will they opt for a financial restructuring? Mike Dunleavy Jr. and the front office face a series of daunting choices, leaving fans eager to find out the team's next moves. Expectations surrounding Golden State's future intensify. Before you finish, make sure to subscribe to the channel. After all, as we said before, we are producing Warriors videos almost every day. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow on Gold Blooded News. In conclusion, the future looks uncertain for the Golden State Warriors. With the possibility of losing and adding players to the team and the various trade options available, the Warriors are well positioned to continue to be a force to be reckoned with in the NBA. Stay tuned for more updates on the Warriors and remember to support by leaving your feedback in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to know when I will send new news. Thank you for following Gold Blooded News. A hug and see you next time. We're Gold Blooded! Go Dubs!